and welcome aboard guys we see you keep coming in here welcome welcome um there is as you know mark you've activated the the chat where people can send in questions already things like yeah, that not not the chat i think it's the q a well the so q a so box yeah. yeah yeah so if anybody has a question just you know type it into the q a and then nate and i will just go through it and we'll answer as much yeah. as we can and uh, uh, we do have, we do have a hard stop at the top of the hour uh, today because I have another appointment to uh, get to. Yep. So. yep. And some of you guys might be new to this. Some of you guys might be existing clients or considering doing this. So Mark and I try to do this webinar once a week, usually once every other week, um, ideally once a week. Um, so we'll what we'll do the kind of the format of this webinar is we do an overview of neurotic capital. We talk about what a promissory note is, and then we typically get quite a bit out, out of the Q and A session, right, with our investors. So uh, I guess to to kind of kick things off here, of course, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Nathan Hall. I work with neurotic capital management. I also work on the Narada real estate side. So I have several clients that that do both, right? We have a very successful real estate brokerage and we also have a, you know, a fund here, a debt fund or, you know, where clients can invest in notes. So uh, I've been in the real estate world for over a decade. I've helped thousands of people buy investment real estate. I'm an investor myself. Um, I've worked with Marco for several years now too. And it's fun to watch him grow his, his business, right? Marco is, you know, a, a real estate investor at heart, but also a, ser a serial entrepreneur and very successful at that, right? It's fun to watch people grow and learn from them and grow their businesses. So, you know, um, it's been a pleasure to work with Marco. It continues to be a pleasure. And I'll, I'll let you introduce yourself here, Marco, as well, and give yourself a little background there. But um, if you'd like to to take it away here for a second, that would be great. Yeah. Just as a quick introduction. Yeah. Yep. Sure. So a real, real quick introduction is basically that, um, you know, I've been an entrepreneur pretty much my whole life as a teenager and going into my late teens, I started investing uh, in real estate. I bought my first rental when I was 18 years old. And so I've always been involved in some sort of business venture or, um, or real estate investment. And, you know, the writing was on the wall. So over the years, I just worked on multiple businesses. I've been involved in, you know, venture capital uh, backed uh, businesses as well back in the dot com era, you know when the internet was kind of a new thing. Um, but um, but I uh, you know over the years I just spent a lot of time uh, in investing in real estate and as a real estate entrepreneur. And then twenty years ago I started Norada Real Estate Investments, which is a nationwide provider of turnkey rental properties. So we help literally thousands of investors invest and build a portfolio that they own um, with everything that we do. Um, and then over the years, over the last 10 years or so, um, I got involved in other investment opportunities from oil and gas to cannabis to yeah. um, you know, just a, a, a multitude of things. And for a period of time, we raised capital on a project by project basis. So they were very project specific. There was a, yeah. a, a, a finite start and end date um, but then in the mid 2000s, around 2015, I started raising capital on an ongoing basis, like literally daily, where we had a large fund of revolving capital to buy, fix and flip properties in the Midwest. And the rationale there was to essentially create turnkey rental properties that we could take from that company and mm -hmm. uh, bring them over to Norada Real Estate Investments so we can provide that inventory to investor clients. Um that got old after about three years because margins were getting smaller and yep. um, uh, inventory was getting tighter, competition was increasing, and it didn't make as much sense. But fortunately, the timing of other opportunities came along and uh, we started branching out into investing in e-commerce based businesses with some of some other partners of mine that I'm still working with to this day. Um, and that was a pivot point. So at that point, uh, that was kind of the seed that launched Norada Capital as we know it today, because Norada Capital, um, I know this is a long answer to your question, Nate, about, you know, me and my background, but it just kind of, it just kind of flows from one thing to another. Yep. Um, you know, so today Norada Capital is more than just, you know, the e-commerce ventures that we started off with years ago. Now, you know, we're involved 
in um, uh, what we call educational mastermind businesses, which are very, very large and profitable. Uh, Broadway productions like Broadway musicals, those are the three main categories, the e-commerce, the Broadway musicals, and the um, uh, the e-commerce, or excuse me, the uh, the educational masterminds. That makes up the bulk of Norada Capital. So we've moved away from real estate over the years just because the margins aren't there, the cap rates are, are too low, uh, and uh, the fund has pivoted to becoming uh, a little more eclectic, but made up of those three main categories. There's a few other components, but uh, yeah, long story short, I've, I've just been a serial entrepreneur and investor in virtually every asset class over the years. And, you know, just educated myself through the uh, school of hard knocks, but, you know, had my fair share of failures, but fair share of successes. So here we are today. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's a great background. I think it's important, obviously for, Anybody who's on this webinar, who who's who's behind the 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 company, right? Who who's the owner? Who's the top of the food chain? So, uh, it's I think it's a great background, and um, you know, kind of going back into those three main categories of neurotic capital management. Um, there's you've hit on that a little bit so far, but you know the different kind of different buckets underneath neurotic capital. I think if we can round that out. Uh, you know, for people who are interested in, in investing with Neurotic Capital, what is a promissory note, you know, and then also what's backing that promissory note, and that'll tie back into the rest of the companies. So you know, a lot of people have never invested in notes before, right? They've never done an accredited type of investment. So if we can give them mm -hmm. a brief overview of what that note is, and then also what's backing that note, I think that would be a good place to go. Yeah, so there's there's several questions all all packed into one there. So let's just address the promissory note piece yep. first because that's the 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 investment vehicle. Promissory note is is nothing more than a loan agreement. It's it's a it's it's a a loan agreement. So it's a contract that has two parties, a borrower and a lender, and uh, it just lays out the terms, the start date, the end date of that note, what's the interest rate or how their payments made, when they're made. Um, it, so it's essentially a loan agreement. Uh, there's no difference between a loan agreement and a promissory note. The only difference is, is a loan agreement tends to have more, more pages, more documentation, but they're exactly the same thing. They fulfill the same function. Yeah. And um, if you've ever signed a, you know, a student loan, a car loan, a, you know, a, a, a signature loan, anything like that, you've signed a promissory note. So we're probably all familiar with what it is because we've used them multiple times in our lives. You just don't necessarily refer to it as a promissory note, but that's what it says on the top. And so um, businesses or corporations raise capital all the time, every day of the year using promissory notes. It's just the instrument of choice. You either you know, are selling debt or you're selling equity. Uh, in our case, uh, with Norada Capital, we're essentially offering you know, or selling equity and, or excuse me, uh, debt. And the promissory note is the vehicle that you know, we uh, raise that capital with. So you would be the lender, we're the borrower. Uh, that document lays out the terms and then you just get paid interest every month, you know, for the length of time that you choose with the promissory note. So um, now that you know what a promissory note is and, you know, simple English, plain language, you know, let's just dive down into uh, the terms that are available to you because um, I think some people are just wondering, well, you know, how does that work? Essentially, it's this. Um, there's really only a couple of tiers. Uh, an investor coming in for an investment up to $100,000 is getting paid 12% per year. And it's paid monthly. It's automatic. It's done through Wells Fargo's direct pay. So it's basically a direct deposit or an ACH deposit right into your bank account um, uh, each and every month at the beginning of the month. Uh, investors that um, are at $100,000 in principle or above uh, receive 15% per year, not the 12, but the 15% per year. Again, it's paid monthly, automatic, beginning of the month, just direct deposit right into your account. And that account could be your checking account, savings account, could be a retirement account, like a, an IRA, a 401k, a Roth account. It doesn't matter to us as long as we have an account number uh, to send the funds to, we can set you up on Wells Fargo's direct pay. Um, and then the length or the term of that note is your choice. We offer anywhere from three to seven years. Now, technically we can do from two to 10. Um, the, the form on our website gives you the option of three to seven, but if you wanted something outside of that, just let us know. Um, we can do two year notes, but we can do up to 10. 
and that's it. You would just get paid every month um, for you know the number of years that you choose for that note. And that's the long and the short of it. Um, one last tier, if you will. So those were two tiers, 12%, 15%. There's a third tier. If an investor um, is uh, invested at 200,000 and above, there's an additional 5% bonus paid mm -hmm. at the end of the note term. So when that note matures, your principal is returned, but there's an additional 5% added to that. So that's kind of a, you know, an incentive, a pot sweetener, it's bonus, bonus interest. So that's, that's the third tier. And um, that's about it, Nate. I don't, I don't think I missed anything with, you know, the notes part. Yeah. Of it. Well, one, one thing I'll add on to that is, you know, if you're going to decide to, to make the investment, the promissory note, there's typically two, two vehicles used for creating the note, right? And this ties into the interest payments and it ties into, you know, maybe some taxable advantages, right? So I have what are called my liquid investors and I have my retirement account investors, right? So you can utilize a business checking account, liquid money available to you to create a note like this or an investment like this. You know, those payments would go directly back into maybe a, a business checking account or a savings account or a regular checking account. Or he, there's, this is a phenomenal vehicle for a self-directed IRA. So for those of you out there that have retirement dollars that are in old 401k plans or current IRAs or Roths that are, that are maybe in the marketplace and you're looking for what's called an alternative investment, you can self-direct that money into a self-directed IRA or a solo 401k. And I would say, I would venture to say that possibly 40 to 50% of our investors utilize some type of self-directed vehicle because the funds that go into that self-directed vehicle are tax deferred, right? And you're using a, a retirement account. Um, so that's, that is an option for you out there who are considering using retirement funds. Um, the other thing to add on to that is if you're going to be making an investment in Tunerata Capital Mansion, we do work with what's called accredited investors, right? An accredited investor is someone who is uh, either a little bit higher net worth. It's There's two qualifications and you could be either, either one of these. It's a million dollar net worth or it's income, income based. It's $200,000 for the previous two years individually or $300,000 per year combined with your spouse. Right. So uh, that is that is one of the qualifications. So, yes, we offer very strong interest rates, 12 percent or 15 percent. We do have to have, you know, a letter of accreditation. And there are also there are multiple vehicles you can use to make that investment, whether it's liquidity or retirement. So that that would be just something to, to hone in on. Um, is it, did I miss anything there, Marco? Anything to add nope. to that? OK, no, nope. that was perfect. OK. As far as what's backing the note, if we, can, if we can circle back to that, obviously, neurotic capital management itself invests in companies, right? So some people want to know, okay, well, when I make the investment, where are those funds going? What is that? What is what is the capital being used for? So if you can talk to that, that would be great. Sure. So let's just start with uh, Norada Capital and describe what okay. it is first, and then you know we can go into the different categories within it. Sure. So from the inside looking out, Norada Capital is, is a private equity firm. It, it invests its capital and resources into business ventures that it is involved in. Uh, it has equity ownership in. Um, in many cases, you know, we sit on the board of directors. Um, uh, you know, we're not just passive investors. Some of the stuff is, but not all of it. So, But from the outside looking in, if you're an investor looking at Norada Capital, it looks like an investment fund. And it is because we're raising capital and we're using that capital. We're arbitraging that capital in, into um, growing uh, either new acquisitions, new business ventures that we're starting up or growing and scaling the existing ventures uh, that we have. There are about 27 different business ventures uh, and they're categorized in really five categories. Three of them are, make up the bulk of what we're doing. So again, the first one is our e-commerce businesses, for example, uh, and we can drill down into this later if you know if 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 needed. But the e-commerce ventures are made up of companies like Pier One Imports, which everybody's heard of, Dress Barn, uh, Linens and Things, um, Steinmart, uh, Models. Uh, there's a few others in there. Some of them are not quite as large in terms of name brands, but these are these are companies that had filed bankruptcy years ago. We came in, made them, uh, made the board an offer. They uh, accepted a term sheet. And what we were offering to purchase is the intellectual property. 
So, you know, the trademarks, the website, the customer database, all that kind of stuff. So we successfully acquired the intellectual property or IP from all these brand assets and they're online only businesses. Now there's no stores. We'll build stores down the road uh, like brick and mortar, but that's the e-commerce component. So that's the first category of, of, of our fund. The second is what I'll call uh, educational masterminds. These are, this requires a whole separate conversation that we can have today if we want, but these, these are businesses where we bring, bring people in to events and into communities where they continually learn more about ed, uh, financial education. There's all kinds of opportunities wrapped around it, but this is about 55% of our fund is made up of these mastermind businesses. They, um, my partner, Andrew calls, calls it the beast because it's such a large uh, part of what we're doing. And it takes up a lot of our, 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 um, our resources, but these are businesses that can generate uh, 60 to $80 million in top line revenue over the next uh, 12 months. Our pro we're already exceeding our pro forma. So they're very lucrative businesses with high, you know, high margins, high, high profit margins. The third category is for some people is the sexier part, the, you know, the, the more of the sizzle, not the steak, but it, it's the uh, Broadway productions. The there's about nine or 10, if I'm not mistaken now, of Broadway musicals that we are producing. Um, some of them are live right now. For example, A Beautiful Noise, which is the Neil Diamond musical. Harmony is going live here very soon. We're, you know, we're, we're um, running previews and whatnot uh, at this point, and we go live next month. Uh, that's with Barry Manilow. We've got Joy coming up. We have Broadway Vacation, which is based on the, the Chevy Chase movies um, uh, uh, called Vacation. Um, a devil, uh, the devil Earth prod is coming up. Uh, we have the notebook coming up. So there's all kinds of very exciting things going on. Uh, but these are, these are Broadway productions and they're exciting musicals and they can be extremely profitable. Uh, you know, it's one of those areas that carries a fair amount of risk as well. But if you have the right team, you mitigate a lot of that risk. So that's the third category. And then the fourth and fifth are very, very small percentages. Um, the fourth is a real estate component where we have land development and we also have, uh, we're building out a short-term rental space. Um, that is a growing part of what we're doing, but again, it's still a minority. And then the last is a very small percentage of uh, some crypto assets. Really, those are just kind of, uh, look, your phone is going off too, isn't it? Yep. There's that emergency broadcast system. It's the national alert, alert this is a test well yeah. i guess i guess the do not disturb doesn't even uh sorry about that man that is loud that is it works guys so anybody yeah. on this call i bet you all 25 people on this call had that too <laughs> yeah well if you live in california you definitely got it so yeah interesting so do not disturb does not block a national alert test message <laughs> oh well you learn something today. So anyway, that's the fifth category is, you know, a crypto assets, which is made up primarily of, of Bitcoin. It's a very small percentage, but you know, that's, that's an inflation hedge, which has a very, very high upside potential, um, you know, on a, on a long-term basis. So those are the five components uh, of Norada Capital as a private equity firm and um, an investment fund. Now, to, you know, the second question you asked is about, is about you know, what, what is quote unquote backing the notes. Yeah. So our portfolio of assets under management is essentially what, um, you know, is what backs the notes. So the notes sit on that foundation of assets. So the note is not attached to any one specific venture or business or asset. It's basically diversified. I'll say that in air quotes. It's diversified across that entire portfolio of business ventures and assets. Uh, which is great for the investor because sometimes, you know, I, you know, I get the question of, you know, is it secured? Is it unsecured? Is it attached to a particular asset or not? And, you know, how does that work? Well, it's, it's not attached to any one thing. So you benefit from the growth of everything that we're doing over time, not just, you know, the, the success or failure of any one venture that we're doing. Uh, so I know investors in conversations for years now, like enjoy and appreciate that diversification across the different mm -hmm. assets of your management. Right. Yeah. I think that's very important actually, because a lot of people uh, have the misconception that let's say, for example, you brought up Broadway musicals earlier, right? We're not creating a note 
between one investor and the success of Joy or Did Ever Worse Prada, you know, then they know it's not tied to one musical, it's tied to neuronic capital management, which again, to reiterate, gets the benefit of multiple assets under management. So right. uh, that's a very important part of this, I believe. Mm -hmm. So uh, with, with that said, you guys, hopefully that makes some, some sense to, to you guys who are on the call with us here today. Um, again, that Q&A box is open. If you guys have some questions, uh, we can certainly move into we have a question here from Chuck. Um, I don't believe we missed anything, Marco, but again, this we'll have a recording that goes out of this, guys, and there's several recordings you, we actually send out every week that uh, reiterate these, these questions. So um, let's dive into the question here. Chuck asked, um, has there ever been a time that an investor has lost their principal or that interest hasn't been paid. And I'll let you answer this one, Marco, because I know it's a source of, of uh, pride for you. That's good. It's a, it's a good answer. So, <laughs> Yeah. So the short answer, Chuck, is no, there's never been a missed payment and no, uh, there's never been an investor who has not been paid. So, so we started issuing uh, promissory notes as far back as 2012. Back then, it was you know very much project specific. It was just one project after another. It was a a, lim a fixed amount of capital raise, and it was for a fixed period of time. So investors always got paid, uh, repaid their principal uh, over the term of whatever that investment was. There, you know, there's, you know, there's there are ventures that sometimes don't work out, but investors you know recoup over a certain period of time. Um, but as far as the interest payments go, and to your question, Chuck, uh, no one has ever not received their interest payment or their principal payment. So fortunately, we have a great track record, and um, we've never missed a payment. Uh, the payments are scheduled um, through uh, Wells Fargo Direct Pay, so there it's not a manual thing we do. We just set you up. It takes about three, four days to get your account approved, but once it's approved then it's just uh, set up to have a deposit dropped every month at the beginning of the month. Usually it's around the second day of the month. Um, but nobody's lost their principal either. Uh, so, you know, fortunately we, we have a great track record. We're going to continue to keep that track record. Is there another part to this question? Um, no, principal no. interest hasn't been paid. No. Um, and yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll answer that. I'll just, I'll, I'll be the one to kind of move that over, Marco, the, the question. Oh, so, yeah, okay. Um, all right, got some good questions coming in here. Um, so we're going to answer the next question here. And there's kind of two questions they asked. So we'll tie those in, Marco. Uh, Sukavir asked, what are the risk factors? And then where will the funds be invested? We did hit on just a second ago where those funds will be invested, Sukur, but we could we can reiterate that for you if you'd like. So, Mark, let's go. What are the risk factors? A fair question. And then where will the funds be invested? Well, there's no such thing as any investment that you know um, you can call risk free. There's no such thing right. as absolute guaranteed risk uh, investment, and there's no such thing as something that doesn't carry any element of risk, however small that might be. Um, the risk factors that I see are more macroeconomic based, such as, you know, a, a, a major recession. I don't see a depression happening, but, you know, that would be a worst, worst case scenario. Um, and then things that I refer to as um, uh, black swan events, you know, the things that you don't know uh, that are coming that actually happen, like COVID would be an example of that, you know, a black swan event. So something like that. Sure, certainly would be a disruption. And uh, would it have an impact? Sure, it would definitely have an impact, maybe not across the board. For, for example, COVID was um, was hard on uh, many businesses like restaurants and, and on Broadway. Broadway basically shut down for quite a long period of time. Um, and so did it impact business there? Yeah, absolutely. But at the same time, uh, e-commerce took off. People couldn't go or didn't want to go shopping to the mall or to you know local stores. They were closed uh, by choice or by force. Uh, so it pushed people to shop online more and more. Like people, um, you know, didn't, didn't really have a choice. So e-commerce, online sales exploded, and so it it helped in one area, 
hurt in another area. So, you know, but that's what happens when you have, you know, major events or disruptions in, you know, in, in uh, the global marketplace or even, you know, within the country, yeah. and, you know, a black swan event like, like COVID is an example of that, you know, an event like nine 11 would also have a shorter term, but a disruption nonetheless. So yeah, certain industries are going to be affected. Um, but are those, you know, permanent, risk factors no it's it's a disruption you know the, it, it will impact revenues it, it'll have an impact on maybe supply chain um, um factors like uh, during covid is another example you know a lot of retailers were sold out so quickly and they couldn't replenish supplies because things weren't being shipped from countries like china you know um, or countries that we you know rely on for for building materials or resources or finished goods and so yeah there's always going to be a risk factor but but if you look at at all these events, uh, they're typically short term, could last you know six months to a year and a half, two years. Like you know, larger recessions can last for over a year, and you know it has an impact on employment and, and whatever else. But yeah. uh, but not, nothing is 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 a permanent or long term. So um, I don't I'm not I don't have major concerns when it comes to risk factors. Yeah, they exist, but. Um, given the diversification that we have, I don't think we're looking at anything that's going to be catastrophic. It'll, you know, it'll be like more like ripples in a pond that it'll be uh, something that is, you know, a long-term problem. Yeah. Um, so, and then to, we'll just go down real quick to that, his second question there. Um, where will the funds be invested? We hit on that earlier. What kind of what's the same, another way to answer, ask that question is what's backing the investment, which we talked about uh, yeah, I mean, again, the short answer there is, you know, where the funds are invested. It's in those five categories. The the greatest focus right now is growing and scaling our uh, our e our um our educational masterminds. So, you know, we call we call them the money is mastermind, uh, the think realty mastermind. Yeah. And then we also have a smaller one called Power Room. And uh, I don't know what city you know you all live in, but we have a major event every month called Aspire. Um, the website is aspiretour.com. So every month we have a major event. There could be 2,000 to 2,500 people at these events. And we have great speakers that come to these events like Kevin O'Leary, um, you know, Marcus Limonis, uh, um, A-Rod, um, uh, you know, Alex Rodriguez. You know, we have um, Kevin Hart coming to um, our Atlanta event. Um, uh, Sarah Blakely, the founder of Spank. So we have all these great speakers that are providing great content and education. And we, so we bring thousands of people together at our Aspire events. And from there, they buy into master classes and ultimately into our mastermind. And, uh, you know, that's, that's our revenue model. So we're continuing to grow and scale these events throughout, um, you know, throughout the country. And uh, we're also growing in the size of these events from one day to two day events. So we'll, we'll ultimately have five yeah. to 7,000 people. And then our larger events, what we call the summit, will have 15 to 17,000 people. And, um, you know, th this is where we're putting a lot of our focus, but it doesn't mean that we're still not focused in other areas like, you know, um, underwriting future Broadway productions or, yeah. um, you know, growing and scaling the operations and marketing of our e-commerce businesses, because those those can be, uh, and we do believe will become billion dollar uh, businesses again, especially Pier One and Bodybuilding.com. So uh, those two by themselves can be and have the potential to become uh, billion dollar businesses individually. And that's just within a, you know, our portfolio. So a long answer to a short question, but, um, but yeah, yeah, so great. Yeah, and great, great questions there. Uh, let's see here. We'll go up to the top here, Marco. Um, Lisa Cole asked, uh, what's your annual gross income and your annual net income? So more of a financial-based question. Yeah, uh, Lisa, I'll answer this more more in general terms. Um, I don't know who your investment counselor is, if it's Nate or, or John or Michael. Um, we have a, um, a, a publicly available... Uh, balance sheet that we can send you. Uh, we are working on a cash flow statement for this quarter that is going to be available for release. And so um, that that should be soon. So we'll send you that as well. And then okay. we're working on a public version of, of a P&L for uh, Q1, probably January. And so we can make that available to you off the top of my head. I don't, I don't know what those numbers are, um, but they're, you know, they're in the millions. 
Okay, great question, Lisa. Let's go down to Ted there. Um, Ted Baker asks, fees associated with retirement accounts, does Narada pay slash offset the fees? Um, I can answer the first part of that if you want, Marco. So yeah, as, far as, as far as fees associated with retirement accounts, Ted, that's not something that we have control over. Every custodian is going to have a different fee structure, whether that's equity trust or horizon trust or provident trust. So I couldn't tell you necessarily the fees associated with any retirement account because we don't set those up. We're going to open those. Um, as far as Narada paying or offsetting the fees, I mean, typically not, right? That's going to be on the, the responsibility of the owner of the account. But Marco, if you want to speak to that, you certainly can. No, no, I think you, I think you gave a complete answer. You know, we every every trust company custodian is going to have a different fee structure. Some of them, you know, are expensive. Some of them are virtually free. Yeah, um, and some of them are just one time fees. You know, you just make the investment. They, you know, they have a transaction fee or whatever it might be, an admin fee, and and it's done with. Uh, you know, we don't know what those are, and we don't have control over them. It's just kind of a cost of doing business or a cost of making an investment. Yeah. Um, so you know, we don't offset that. Uh, but keep in mind, you know, you know, our investments are very lucrative. You know, the the interest rates that we pay, the yield that we pay on our notes is very attractive, um, and something that's really not, you know, easy to find uh, around. I mean, there's not too many places you can go where you have that type of return. So, um, and also, we don't charge fees ourselves. So, you know, we have a zero fee fund. Uh, so that means yeah. that one hundred percent of your principal goes to work. We're not, you know, taking management fees off the top or or on the back end. There's no in entry or exit fees. So one hundred percent of your principal is working for you and earning interest all the time from day one forward. So um, I think that you know says a lot, especially for funds like two and twenty funds and whatnot, where you know you're getting fees and sharing in the profits. Yeah. All right. Thanks for the question, Ted. Mm -hmm. um, Sandeep asks, tell me more about, could you tell me more about the educational masterminds since that is half your business? Yeah. So um, <clears throat> I'll, I'll give you more, more detail and color here. And then of course, you know, when you talk to your investment counselor here, whether it's Nate or John or, or Michael, uh, they can certainly go deeper into it as well. <clears throat> so so the educational, we have three masterminds. There's the Think Realty mastermind. Uh, the big one is the money is mastermind, something that we're really building out quickly. And it's becoming more of a movement, not just a mastermind. And then we have a, a tr more traditional five-star mastermind, much like what um, you know Napoleon Hill wrote about in Think and Grow Rich, yeah. and that's called Power Room. Uh, powerroom.com is the website for that. Uh, money is has its own website. We don't we do more on social media than we do with the website. The website will be rebuilt. <clears throat> but money is is basically uh, two things, content and community. So people join Money Is, the Money Is Mastermind, because they get con regular content, lots of content, uh, practically on a daily basis. So we have um, uh, weekly webinars, always very topic specific from, you know, tax savings to making money, earning money, protecting money, asset protection. We have Tax Tuesday. So there's all kinds of great content that's being put out on a daily basis. Uh, we have uh, major um, education weekly and monthly, and then we have four or five live events a year uh, that we uh, get together at. Uh, that's the you know actual Money Is Mastermind live event. And so people come there to learn from speakers. They get lots of great content and education, but also they're exposed to investment opportunities as well. So they know where to move their money. So my partner, Andrew, talks about money movement a lot you know, how to move your money to maximize the earning power of your dollars at the same time deferring or eliminating the tax impact. So we get into some pretty advanced tax uh, tax strategies and tax um, tax related education. So you can pay as little tax as possible legally, of course. And so uh, so the Money is Mastermind has an online community and, and, and a live community. It's the same people but we have an incredible app that, you know, allows people to continue the conversation and continue learning. And we keep you posted with updates and we have all kinds of video content that's dropped virtually every day. That's, you know, in a nutshell, the money is mastermind. So we drive people into, you know, the mastermind through our uh, Aspire tour events. 
as well as uh, through the master classes that we do every month, you know, in different places around the country. So, um, you know, so let's talk about it from a business perspective, because, you know, Sandeep is, you know, asking, you know, tell me more and, you know, that's kind of half your business. So just to kind of open up the kimono a little bit from the financial side of it, uh, people who come to Money Is are essentially buying in for on average $15,000 per year, which is not a, a large amount in any by any stretch when it comes to a mastermind, especially of this caliber and the amount of content um, and access you have. Access to a lot of high level people too. So um, some investors are, are some some members actually are coming in for a larger amount, but let's just call it fifteen thousand. So you know when you have fifteen thousand dollars per year to be part of this great community along with all the content, that's top top line revenue. Our pro forma shows that we're, we'll make sixty million dollars from money is alone uh, this year, like you know on a twelve month calendar. Um, our margins are running roughly about 45%. So that means the bottom line profit is somewhere around 26 to 28 million. And that's not including some additional profit centers that we've added just in the last three to six months, which includes uh, some you know products like what we call Aspire for More, which is a monthly subscription model and whatnot. So we are finding other ways to generate revenue and cut costs. So the, the profitability of that is gonna continue to grow. Uh, the valuation right now of money is th and think realty um, those two primarily um, but if you throw in power room as well uh, is right around 400 million dollars that's that's the current valuation of that uh, we believe that within 12 to 24 months probably closer to 24 months it'll be a billion dollar enterprise a billion dollar business and we're getting a lot of attention a lot of eyeballs from uh, a lot of very well-known public figures uh, the media uh, people are coming to us now saying, hey, how do we participate and get involved in what you're doing? Um, and this is why we draw people like, you know, uh, Kevin O'Leary, Marcus Limonis, um, you know, A-Rod, you know, just the list goes on and on. And you can see these people on at AspireTour.com, and I encourage you to go there. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a fun business. It's exciting. We're changing a lot of people's lives, like to the tune of thousands of people. And that's why I call it more of a movement than I call it a mastermind, but it's both. So yeah, um, so yeah we're, we're definitely putting a lot of time and energy and attention. And uh, I encourage you to try and catch one of the Aspire events just to get a taste of what we're doing. And you can find uh, upcoming dates by going to AspireTour.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, which is just that at uh, um, Aspire Tour. I believe it's Aspire Tour. So yeah, Sandeep, I hope I answered your question. <laughs> Maybe yeah, that was a good good answer, Marco. <laughs> uh, great, great question, Sandeep. Sure. Uh, and to your other question, Sandeep, can we send you some e-commerce links such as Pier One? I mean, yeah, it's it's, it's very simple. Just go to PierOne.com, right? You can go to PierOne.com. That'll pull up a ticker tape bar across the top of the page and you can see all the other e-commerce businesses that we're involved with. So yeah. Um, or if you Google, if you Google any of those names, it'll be the first website yeah. that comes up in the search results on Google. Exactly. Yeah. By the way, as a side note for those still, you know, on the webinar here and, and talking about the e-commerce side of things. So uh, there was a nationwide retailer called um, uh, Tuesday morning. Uh, many of you will be familiar with it. They had over 400 stores. Um, they uh, they just closed their doors. I think it was early, last year, uh, late last year. Um, they had one. They had an amazing CEO, uh, a guy named Andrew, and um, super sharp person. Um, he he's you know he had he had nothing to do with you know the the uh, the closing of of Tuesday morning, but I will let you know if, if, because it's not confidential information anymore. Uh, we 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 did hire him and retain him as as our our future CEO to run our entire e-commerce uh, enterprise as we go forward with this restructure that we're in the middle of right now. So Andrew will be uh, leading the ship uh, for yeah. us. Sorry, my phone was ringing there. Uh, yeah, he, uh, he will be um, uh, running the ship, and he brings many many years of of uh, retail experience. Yeah, um, you know, to to the leadership team. So, yeah, that's that's super exciting. It's always we all we always know want to have good leaders at the top. So, yeah, uh, 
All right. Uh, let's see. Bruce asked, how many employees does Narada have? Um, good question. I, I'm not sure what that has to do with the investment process, but there's several here. I mean, Marco, do you want to talk about our team here for a little bit? Yeah, it's kind of a two-layered question because there there are the people who work directly in the company, and that's yep. nine, nine. But if you look at every entity, every venture, there is a slew of people yeah. that work within that. So, for example, on the we were just talking about the you know the Aspire Tour and the Mastermind businesses, there are close to sixty employees on that side of it. That are charged, yeah. you know, in, responsible for content, content creation, uh, the event planning and execution on the events, um, you know, the the uh, the technology and the apps, um, uh, you know, there's just the marketing side of it, the operations side of it, uh, cu our, our customer service side of it. So, you know, there's a bunch of employees within each entity. So think of every business as a standalone viable business that runs and operates on its own. Uh, but then it's got a wrapper around it where, you know, we, you know, uh, uh, participate in, in setting direction and being involved in those business ventures and Norada capital, you know, is involved by being, uh, you know, an investor, equity owner, partner, sometimes a board member of these various ventures. So, um, they're, they're tied together, but yeah. they all run independently of each other. Okay, great, great question, Bruce. Thank yeah. you, Marco. Um, Doug asked, and we again, we've spoken to this quite a bit. Uh, what is my investment backed by? Do you have assets, gold, cash, real estate? Um, I will let you reiterate that, Marco. Yeah, Doug, we we did talk about this at um, you know some length earlier on, and this is being recorded, so we'll send it to you as well. But the short answer, just to kind of hit it one more time, is you know, our entire portfolio, 27, 28 different ventures. Uh, you know, uh, businesses and assets that are our portfolio is the foundation that backs your note. So your note, again, is not attached to only one specific business or asset in our portfolio. It's backed by the whole thing. So it's like your note sits on top of that foundation and it benefits from the growth and expansion of everything that we're doing. All our, what would, you know, might be referred to as assets under management, AUM, um, that that's really what you know is backing your note so those are all assets they're worth whatever they're worth they're worth something and and that basically backs your note yeah yep good question doug thank you for the answer marco um all right the uh how well is the how well secured is your firm against a ransomware attack is there a fee if an investor needs to back out from the contract all right so two questions there a risk question on ransomware and then is there a fee if the investor backs out from the contract? I That's an interesting question. Ransomware. <laughs> never seen that one before. Yeah. I've never seen that one before <laughs> either. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't think that ransomware is um, uh, an issue because like I said, all the businesses run independently and operate and stand on their own. There's, it's not like someone can come to us and lock anything down and right. use that as as leverage or blackmail against anything else because everything just runs on its own. Uh, you know, we're just Norada is just a beneficiary of everything else going on within its portfolio. So, so no one can really threaten us by you know by by an attack or by ransomware. Um, interesting question though. Um, is there a fee if an investor needs to back out? Um, no, you just choose your term for what you're comfortable with. There's really no, there's there's no liquidity. There's no language to say, yeah, you know, you can back out at any time. You basically, if you choose a, like a two, a three year note as an example, you're you're locked in for that three years. Now, you know, as a side note, let's just say you have you know a medical emergency or a catastrophe or some sort of you know urgent need, uh, then just contact us. You know, we can certainly talk to you about it and work something out for you. And it's happened a couple times over the years where someone you know just had a catastrophic emergency in the family and we just kind of paid off their note you know and just ended the contract so um but the, you know but there's no language in the contract in the promissory note that just says yeah you know you could just 
you know, liquidate the note at any time. You know, you choose the term that makes sense for you and you're, you're locked in there just like a, a CD, a certificate of deposit, although there's no comparison between the two. Yeah. Good question, VA. Good answer, Marco. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an answered question. So Ted Baker asks, uh, could you please explain the difference on payouts, simple interest versus amortized loans? Um, are there any other options? So... Yeah, 99% of the notes we we offer and issue are interest only, meaning that if you made a, an investment, let's just say $100,000, you're getting paid you know, $1,250 a month, which if you do it times 12, it's $15,000 yeah. a year. That's your 15%. Uh, it's interest only. You get that every month, like clockwork. It's just uh, direct pay, like an auto automatic payment into your bank account. And then when your note matures, you get the principal back. Um, we've kind of eliminated the amortized note option. We, we, we had it and it's kind of still sitting there, but, you know, we've kind of made a, an executive decision to, to get rid of the amortized note option. Um, and the only difference there is that every month you're getting paid just like a, a mortgage loan principal and interest. And every month those numbers vary, you know, principal increases, interest decreases. So, you're, as an investor, you're really better off uh, uh, with the interest only, not the amortized note loan. You, you actually make considerably more, almost two to three times the amount of interest over the life of the loan with an interest only versus an amortized loan. So, um, but yeah, happy to talk about it further if, you know, if, if you need to or want to. Yep. All right. Thank you, Ted. Um, Chuck asks, if this is another risk question, right? Uh, is there a possibility you can go bankrupt? Good question, uh, Chuck. Marco, do you want to speak to that? Yeah. Um, I mean, any business, regardless yep. of how big or how successful it is, can potentially go bankrupt. But the question is, is what is causing or pushing that business or company into bankruptcy? Um, we're, we're at a point now where we have enough growth and momentum that the likelihood of that is slim to none. Um, so is there a possibility? That's true. There's a possibility with any business and any venture at any time. It's just it's just a possibility. I mean, if something major catastrophic happens or or you know, the entire the board of directors all decides to, you know, uh, liquidate the assets and and go to Bahamas or wherever, you know, <laughs> yeah. well, yeah, I mean that that could happen. Um I, you know, I just don't see that happening here. So, um, but no, I mean, I, you know, the, the, we're, 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 at, we're, we're, we're growing at a pace right now. And we have so much momentum that it's, it's actually very exciting. So, you know, the possibility of bankruptcy is, is slim to none. Yep. All right. Good. Good question, Chuck. Thanks for the answer, Marco. Uh, back to Bruce. Uh, how much debt does Narada have outstanding? Yeah, it, it's a good question. It's kind of like when you think of it, think of it in like real estate terms, it's almost like yeah. uh, what we call loan to value or LTV. Um, there's different terms for it, depending on how you measure that. So uh, debt outstanding, the way to look at this is, is what is the capital raise? And then what is the, uh, the market value or the asset value? Um, and, and, you know, this is what you can see on a balance sheet. So it's roughly around 50 million. So it's not, it's, it's a big fund, but it's not like a massive fund. Uh, I have friends who run, you know, um, um, uh, nine figure funds, yeah. you know, in New York and, um, you know, Jeff, one of my friends is on CNBC all the time. So, uh, you know, really good guy. Um, but yeah, we're somewhere in the neighborhood of, uh, 50 million or so. Uh, but the assets under management, like the valuations of the businesses and whatnot that we have are, are somewhere around 150 million. So you do the math, that's about 30, 33%, somewhere around there. Um, the, and, the, and those values are growing pretty rapidly too, especially after a meeting I had this morning, you know, with what's coming up um, this year with our e-commerce businesses, you know, we are going to see that over the next 12 to 18 months become a uh, collectively worth probably you know close to 500 to 700 million dollars so that part of it is growing much faster than our debt and then the other thing you got to keep in mind is is at you know as the months go by over the course of the next three years those notes are going to be paid off and reduced like our capital raising efforts are going to start to diminish and the notes will start to be 
paid off. So the the capital stack or the debt stack will diminish while the equity in the assets will will grow faster. And so um, that percentage or that ratio will start to diminish considerably over the next two to three years. Yeah. All right. Good question. Thanks for the answer, Marco. Yeah. And then uh, Via asked, is, is an in, as an investor, can I use an LLC to invest? And can that interest be paid to the LLC bank account? Um, the short answer is, I can answer that one as well, is, is yes, yes, of course. Uh, we have several investors that use businesses, EIN numbers, or EIN, you know, uh, and business checking accounts to to invest in promissory notes. So yes, it's absolutely equal you can use. Uh, and Marco, if you want to elaborate on that, you certainly can. Yeah, no, um, you, you answered it. Uh, basically, any 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 U.S. account, whether it's a, yep. a, your LLC, personal account, um, a trust company, it doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's a bank account, a U.S. bank account, we can send funds to it we can send your your interest payments to it it, it doesn't yeah. matter to us if you're using an entity like an llc that's probably what you'll put on the note as the name of the holder in other yeah. words the lender so it's your whatever llc and that is who's making the investment and then we'll just have your interest payments go back to that that company or that llc simple love it mm -hmm. uh thank you vila Thank you, Marco. Any, are there any other questions anybody has, guys? I mean, I think that might be a record, new record, Marco. Yeah. We're at 11, 11.50 and we've, we've so far answered all the questions, which is yeah. pretty darn good. Normally we're running all the way to 11.15 or so, or 12.15 or so. So yeah. um, really good questions, guys, all of you. Uh, there will be a recording going out of this webinar. So keep an eye out on your email inboxes there. Um, if you guys, again, you have more questions, you can email info at neuroticapital.com. You can go directly to our website, neuroticapital.com. There is a live chat widget. There's just a myriad of ways you can get a hold of us. Uh, you know, some of you guys might have already spoken to us. Um, if you guys are interested in actually making the investment and starting your actual promissory note, it's quite simple. There's there's a, a profile for me, fellas. It's just neuroticcapital.com forward slash profile. And that takes you directly to a profile form. You input your information and that kicks you back your actual contract. It doesn't mean there's money being exchanged. It just gives you the contract. And uh, that's that's the vehicle we use to, to create the investment. Uh, so it doesn't look like any other, other questions have popped in here. Uh, so Marco, I, I thank you for your time today, sir. Yeah, and we, we thank you guys for your time and uh, we'll, we'll see you again next week. Yeah. Thanks, Nate. And thanks for attending everybody. Appreciate your time. Yeah. Take care guys. Bye-bye. Talk to you soon.